everybody. Thanks for coming and joining me. I wanted to tell you all about Mr. Maestro, who has been helping me a lot, a little bit of in advertising. He was given to me years ago um, by a student, and he virtually sat around in my studio and probably listened to me and never talked to me. And uh, I have to give credit to Rebecca Harold. She's another pianist. She saw him sitting in the background of my first Facebook Live video, and she made a comment that she thought he looked a little stiff, and I thought that was really funny. So now I have been having a lot of fun um, taking him on errands and trips, and um, having him having him help me. So this is Mr. Maestro. Maestro, take it away. Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, before I start, I would like to say happy birthday to Ellen Sylar on August 4th and her husband Roland, who had a birthday also this year, and they both beautifully turned 80 years old. So I'd like to dedicate this first song for you guys. It's called Shangri-La, and after I finish playing it, I'll tell you a little bit about where I came up with this arrangement and a little history on the song Shangri-La. Um, the song Shangri-La uh, comes from a movie called Lost Horizon, 
And um, I'm not familiar with uh, a lyricist Carl Sigmund and Matt um, Melnick, but I do know the name Robert Maxwell. And um, Shangri-La, of course, refers to um, a Tibetan utopia. I've always liked that song. I wanted to tell you where I came with that arrangement. Years ago, I saw Ferranti and Teicher in San Diego. And if you're not familiar with their names, they both went to Juilliard. And when they finished college, they decided it might be more fun to uh, team up and do concerts for a living. And they were tremendously successful. And I had the pleasure to see them once in San Diego a long time and a joke that we'll never forget is uh, somebody from the audience asked them, is it necessary to have long fingers to play the piano? Uh, and the one pianist responded, only if you have short arms. So we always thought that was very funny. So that's the story of Shangri-La. Um, I decided I'd go back to some of the first pieces I wrote to give you an idea of what some of my pieces sounded like when I started. And the first one I'm going to play for you is called Lonesome Road. And it doesn't really have a story. I just pick the key that I like, that sharp minor, and I start coming up with the melody. And then, in a lot of cases, the feeling of the song, uh, then I try to find a title that matches it. So that's how Lonesome Road got its title. So here's Lonesome Road. Um, so here is this particular piece is called At Nightfall. 
and it comes from my um, my fifth CD. And after trying um, these generic kind of looking covers, which I, I think were just fine, for this CD I really wanted to have an original piece on the cover. And this happens to be a piece I wrote called Rock of Iris, but I don't think the artwork was exactly what I intended, but the music is just fine. So here's At Night Tall. Here's how number six looks. 
and I kind of settled on writing 13 pieces per CD. I don't know, I like the number 13. But uh, after I wrote this piece, I got a phone call. Uh, I was in my studio, and I got a phone call from somebody in Florida. And uh, I didn't know who the lady was. And when I called back, she put me on hold and said, oh, she wanted me to speak to somebody else. She, had, she was a secretary calling for somebody. And uh, his name was Andrew. And he had heard this particular piece is called, um, what the heck is this song called? Um, I said, I'll think of it. It's called, oh, well, it's called Hidden Places. And so I think Andrew had heard this on Pandora, and for some reason he just had the feeling that he wanted to talk to me, and he called my number, and, and I answered, and I'll just never forget being on the phone with Andrew. You know, it's like he thought he was talking to somebody famous or some, you know, big star just because he heard my song on Pandora. I just thought that was cute. And then Andrew and I decided, even though Andrew and I have never met, that um, we would pick a hidden place, that this song would be reminiscent of a hidden place. So I can't tell you where it is because it's hidden. But the name of the song is called Hidden Places.
By the way, Andrew, I wanted to get a hold of you and let you know I was playing it live, but I lost your email address. So if you find out about this, reach out to me. I'd love to say hello to you again. Um, I thought I'd tell you a story about why being the second of four girls in the family was I the one to get piano lessons. And um, did anybody else get piano lessons? Well, we had a, a wonderful benefit of going to a public school in northern Indiana that had fantastic orchestra and fantastic band, and you could sign up for any instrument that you wanted. And my older, and I'd like to thank uh, Charles Buckley, who was the orchestra teacher then. You might remember him, some of you. Um, my older sister had taken violin, and so you know you copy what your older sister does. So I took violin too. But at that time, my mom also wanted to start her on accordion lessons. And my mom had bought this really cute little accordion. Uh, and accordion has straps, you know, that go over your shoulders and that sort of thing. And um, Sonia wasn't that interested in the accordion. And my mom found a, a really funny way to attach it to her. So it wouldn't fall off. She would take a kirpa. If you're Serbian, you know what kirpa means. If you don't find a Serbian friend and, and figure it out, but she literally would tie the accordion to her so she couldn't get out of it. So in my mom's own way, I think um, she sent Sonia the wrong direction, away from accordion. And then uh, the piano came to our house. I've told you that story before about how the piano came from neighbors that were moving. And I guess I went to it, my mom saw that, and so that's how my piano lesson started. Later after that, we moved um, from East Chicago to Griffith, and Griffith didn't have the orchestra that um, East Chicago, Washington did because my sister Binky was also taking the violin and was quite good, but her and my young sister Nanda ended up going into sports and um, not really pursuing instruments, even though they're all very musical. So that's the story of why I got to have the piano lessons. All right, so I'm going to play um, one more song. I wanted to really play this cute little combination of a handle Bach piece that I put together over the years, but. It didn't pass the test today in playing, so hopefully I'll get it rehearsed a little bit more and be able to play it for you. It's kind of, I think it's clever, and, and somebody might really enjoy those pieces. So my last piece is going to be, um, oh, it's called For a Song. For, F-O-R, a song. And again, it didn't really have a story. I just kind of started playing around with some sounds. And I came up with this, and I thought, oh, what am I going to call that thing? And uh, it's just For a Song. I wrote the music for a song. So here's For a Song which is from my third CD. I'd also like to say hello to my friend Lenny, a drama teacher that, can you see me still like? A drama yeah. teacher that I worked with years ago. We had such a great collaboration of our drama, uh, dramatic and musical ideas. And did some fantastic programs together. But I remember when she first heard the song, she said it was the one she favored on the CD. So Letty, this is for you for a song.
so we're playing a little bit shorter. We're going on. Um, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I wanted to tell you to join me next time. I'd love to share the story of my uh, college audition into the School of Music at Indiana University, which is a very prestigious school. And there are things that you know go on in your lifetime and you never, ever really forget. And that college audition, I will never forget. And I'd love to share that with you. I will uh, plan on sharing that next time. So until next time, uh, remember that practice is discovery. And I'm going to be discovering a lot between now and my next uh, Facebook Live with you. Thanks for joining me. Bye.